Hello. Today we're going to start a series of videos going over tools that will hopefully allow us to quickly design and develop cloud native applications. Uh, for our initial set of videos, we're going to focus on a technology called OpenAPI, previously known as Swagger. A Swagger, uh, some of you may have used before in order to put a front end on an existing REST service. But what we're going to do is what's called contract first development, where we're going to create our REST um, API contract before we ever touch a line of code. And the way that we're going to do that is by designing an open API specification document, or an OAS. Um, for this first video, we're really just going to focus on an initial design of our very first API um, and our very first OAS. Now, a perfectly valid way to do that would be to go to the open API website and download one of their example codes. They have a pet store one, and then modify that uh, to match what you want your API to look like. Um, but especially if you're new to OpenAPI, that can be a little intimidating and it's pretty easy to mess up. Um, so for this initial creation portion, we're gonna use a tool called uh, Apicurio. Uh, Apicurio is, is a nice tool for when you're initially creating an API. It kind of walks you through it in a little more of a, a natural flow, in my opinion. Um, and really helps you get up and running. Uh, it's also got some some other features that are pretty neat. Um, uh, probably the most important one is it allows you to add collaborators so multiple people can be working on the API uh, in its initial stages of development. I, I will say that it does have some limitations, so it's not something that you want to use to keep editing your API kind of once you're up and running, um, but it is really good for, for getting started. So let's take a look at that. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to click Create new API. For this, we're going to create a really basic to do list. So we'll just name it to do, and the description will be to do list. Um, you'll see the templates. If you want to, you can start with some example API code. Uh, for us, we're just going to click blank API. And we'll click edit. And then you can see that we've kind of got the start of our API. Uh, if you click the source tab here at the right, you can see that we have what's technically an OAS document. Um, not a whole lot to it right now. So the first thing that we're gonna fill out is this metadata piece here um, on the right-hand side. So we'll add some contact info. Uh, license, and this is pretty cool, it gives you a preset uh, selection of pretty common licenses. I'll choose the Apache one. A tag definition, uh, this is something that, um, for those of you who have used Swagger in the past, on your UI side will allow you to kind of group together um, like endpoints. Add a server be the base server for now we'll just add local hosts uh, you can add multiple of these or you can give them um, server variables for your different environments for the future uh, and the last two things I'm just going to kind of point out uh, that exist are these security schemas most of the time when you're designing a REST service, you're going to have some sort of authorization. You can set that up in the security schemas and security requirements down here. I'm not going to go into that for this particular demo, but I did want to point out that they exist. All right. So now that we've got our metadata set up, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new data type. We're going to just call this to-do, and it's just going to be a basic to-do list item. Um, for this, JSON example, take something from here. Um, we're just going to add a little piece of example of what we think our data should look like um, and try and include all of the variables there. So here we've got a name, a description, a date, and a completed value. Um, and you'll notice that the completed isn't a string. These guys are. This date is in a you know, pretty common date format, um, which Apicurio is actually going to be able to detect, and we'll, we'll actually see that in just a second. Uh, for our last piece, we're just going to click REST resource here. This is going to create all the REST resources that we're going to need 
for uh, manipulating this data type, adding, deleting, that sort of thing. So let's click save and see what we have. All right, so we can see that we have our data type here. Um, this list of properties, we also have some paths that have been created for us from that REST service piece. Um, we'll take a look at those in just a second. So for our data type, let's click to the source tab and take a look at what we've got. Um, so this is gonna be the actual schema information that you're gonna see in the overall OAS document. And any changes you make here will be made there as well. So if we wanted to change our title, for instance, we could pretty easily do that. You just click the save button up here. Um, I wanna point out here with the properties, uh, it was able to, to grab those properties based on your example code, the name, description, date, and completed. Um, and it was also able to gra grab the type. So here it was able to tell that completed was a Boolean type. And it was able to grab a format um, for your date string. So it was able to tell that this was not just a, a, type, a regular string for your date, but it was a string um, of type or of format date time, which is, is pretty cool. Um, if you want to change any of that, you can you can either change it here in the source code, or you can click design, make changes here. You can add descriptions. Um, you can change the type. So if we wanted to say this the string was byte type, and the property was required or not required, we could. Um, won't do any of that, but but note that that's pretty easy to change. And then when you make those changes, it'll you know it'll show up in your, your source code here. Let's take a look at the paths now and see what it created for us. You can see here we've got um, a get for a specific to-do item, the ability to update a, an existing item or delete an existing item. Uh, we also have the ability to get all the items and the ability to create a new item. So it hit all of the major CRUD operations that we would want uh, with this to-do data type. Um, so if we take a look at a source here, uh, at this top level, we're going to call these verbs. Um, we can see that we've got a summary and description here. Summary is just something for us. Description is what your user is going to see on your Swagger UI. Uh, and then we have this list of operations, get, put, delete. Uh, inside of each of these, we can see there's this response piece. Uh, these are the responses that we expect the backend to return to us. So any responses here should be implemented in some way by the backend. Right now, we've just got the happy day responses. We've got the 200s, 202s, 204s. Um, and then inside of that, you can see what we expect um, the content of that response to be. So in the case of the get, we expect it to return an application JSON. Uh, and the schema that it should be following is pointing back to our to-do data type down here. Um, we also have this operation ID here. Uh, so this is what's going to be used when we do the code generation to generate the method names inside of your controller methods. Um, so keep that in mind if you, you have a specific way you like to name methods, uh, you're gonna wanna change, change this operator ID. Uh, and then the other piece that is not inside of the get, but inside of the put is this request body. Um, this is just, what it sounds like, it's what we expect the user um, to be putting into this particular operation whenever they call it. Uh, one thing I wanna point out is all of this stuff can be changed in the design tab pretty easily. Uh, so let's say for example, um, we wanted to allow our users to return uh, XML or we want to allow our, our endpoints to return XML. You can go here, click add media type, text XML, add, um, make sure to change the type to our to-do type. Uh, and then if we click our source, we can see that now we can return XML inside of our get response. So it's pretty easy to do. Um, also, if we wanna add a new response altogether, let's say we wanted to allow our users to return a 404, it's a pretty common error. Um, we add the response, we add a description that says uh, to do item not found. We can see that that 404 has been put into our get. Uh, now, if you're more comfortable with 
manipulating code. You don't really want to have to go through the UI for all of this. You can do it that way too. So if we copy this 404 and then we put it down here inside the put and click save, now our put returns a 404 and that is actually shown on the UI portion. So if we click put here, scroll down to our responses, we can see that 404 tab is there. Uh, the last piece that I want to show in here is this parameters that's also at the verb level. Um, because this is at the, the same level as all of the operations, what that means is anything inside of this parameter is applied to all operations inside of this schema. Uh, so this to do is a path variable, and we can see that here, this um, to do ID. And this to do path variable is going to be applied to this delete, this put, and this get. Uh, now note that you don't have to put parameters at the path level. You can put them inside of the operations level. In fact, let's let's just take a quick look at how to do that. Um, let's say for this list of to-do items, we wanted a query parameter that said completed. You can either add with this uh, URL here or with this little plus button over here. If completed show completed slash uncompleted uh, to do items we won't make it required and then we'll make it of type boolean and if we save it here we can see that this query parameter is going to be at the operation level and then when we click on sources we can see the parameter is at the operation level and not at the path level now again uh, if we decided we did want this to be at the path level for some reason, um, we could pretty easily do that. Just put the parameters here, save, and if we go back, we can see that that parameter is now at the, the path level or the verb level. But yeah, so you can see that it's pretty easy to manipulate this stuff. And again, you can just go through each of these, take a look at it yourself. You've got headers, cookies, uh, request bodies, all this stuff can be added. Um, we can add our, our to-do tag that we had created before pretty easily to um, each of these different operations. Um, I highly recommend taking some time to kind of click around here and seeing all of the different ways that you can uh, manipulate the paths. There's a lot you can do here. Uh, one more thing, I'm not going to create one, but one more thing that you can do is you can add custom responses. Um, this is for, especially for like error codes and stuff like that, um, or error messages. If you have like a response that you're going to be reusing a lot, you can create it down here. And then um, when you create request bodies and you have this type here, the error response or the response type is one of the items that will show up here. Um, if it's not, because not everything is necessarily a data type. Uh, so let's take a look at, at what we've got. So if you remember before, our OAS document was just these three lines, but now we can see that we've got all of our metadata up here. We've got our path information. Um, we've got our, our schema with our to-do item and our tags. And uh, this is a pretty, pretty, pretty basic, but uh, pretty much fleshed out um, API that we've just designed here in the last five, 10 minutes. Um, so it's, it's pretty neat. Uh, just some other things to, to point out that you can do with this guy is if you go back to the dashboard and get into the API, you can add collaborators. Uh, I think this is pretty important when you're initially creating your API. A lot of times you're going to want more than one person to be able to make changes to it, take a look at it, that sort of thing. So um, if you add the collaborators, you can either invite them directly or invite them with a um, with an invitation link however you want to do that um, you can also preview your documentation so you can take a look at what uh, the ui is going to look at um, all your gets and your deletes uh, you can see that that tag that we created is right here and underneath of that were the two endpoints that we tagged um, but yeah, I would I would highly recommend taking a little bit of time to click around Apicurio. Um, you can do a lot. It's it's pretty pretty powerful. Again, I wouldn't recommend it for keeping up with API documents, but it is really really powerful for uh, getting you up and running and doing that initial creation.
I hope this was useful. Thanks.